So my name is Sharmila and um, currently I'm working as a research assistant at Public Health Ontario in the field of molecular biology. Um, so one thing that I'm great at I think is connecting with people, so listening to people and validating their feelings. Um, one thing that, there's several things that I need help with, but um, one thing is I've been told that I also have an up voice when I'm presenting, so that's something that I need to work on. Great. Let's see how you ended it. It's something I need to work on. Yeah. It's something I need to work on. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm that was good. You ended your practicing. That, yeah. That's great. Just keep keep practicing and you will notice it and you will get better at it. So that was really, really good. Yes, yeah, so let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Shabla, I would watch the use of your hands. When you do it well, when it helps what you're saying, it's impactful. When it doesn't, it's it's distracting. So when, for example, you know, one thing that I need to work on, helpful, it has to do with what you're saying. Connecting, you did that, helpful. My name is Sharmila, <laughs> you know, distracting. So just watch the use of your hands, okay? How you use them. Again, it's good to use them, just how you use them. My name is Vaidehi Tharmartnam. I'm currently a consulting analyst at Accenture, working in the IT consulting field. Um, one thing I'm great at, I'm great at playing the piano, so I'm a musician. And one thing that I need help with, um, I need to have the executive presence. So I've been told when I'm at client meetings, I'm very bubbly and very, uh, very charming, but in a very like girlish way. So I want to be taken more seriously during meetings. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I would say you are expressive with your face. I would try and not use your. I do know that you use your eyebrows yeah, a lot. Yeah. I do too. So yeah, you want to just. You know, just try not to use them and try not to move them too much because again, it, it takes the attention towards that. Okay. And if it's not adding to your message in some way, then it's distracting. Okay. Right? Uh, the other thing is, I think you're so much better now at speaking with impact with that without the inflection. But on sometimes you do use it, and that's when I start to think, yeah, you are kind of girly, and you are, you know. My name is Mario Pushparadnam. I work as a real estate secretary at a law firm that does mostly residential real estate at the moment. It's my first year working there, and so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, my short-term goal is to find some time to go into law school and maybe uh, work on getting a law degree. And long-term, I'd like to get involved in politics and at some level. Uh, the thing that I'm good at is, like Michael, remembering things and like Varun, uh, fixing things. But also one of the things is I can also take information and connect things. So I know that Dharani works for Stephen Shrub Law Office now, even though she never mentioned that because I got a fax at where I work from her. And that freaks people from out because usually, usually I, know things about, I know things about people that they never mention. <laughs> so I scare people like that sometimes. And, um, the thing that I need help with is I'm not very persistent. If I don't get things that I want, I learn to live without them rather than trying to get them. So I'd like to work on being more persistent. Friends, we are meeting Vaidehi at uh, how, how to influence. Uh, what, what is this workshop is all about? Oh, hi, everyone is on how to influence others and be heard. So uh, today we have Ahalia Kumaran providing us with uh, tips on how to uh, have a better executive presence. So my name is Vaidehi Tharmaratnam and I'm part of the Canadian Tamil Alumni Association and I'm Director of Communication. So we're very fortunate to have Ahalia and she's a leadership coach and a professional developer with uh, senior executives for different uh, organizations basically. So in the first part of the session she was providing us with her life experiences on how um, she has made her voice heard um, in meetings and in client sessions and she provided her tips and wisdom and we've also had several uh, activities um, that enable each of us to kind of get out of our comfort zone and figure out how it is we can talk from our inner voice and make our voice heard and be more influential to other people. I believe like you guys do events every month, uh, like work free show workshops uh, like that. So yeah. what, what is coming up uh, next? Um, oh yeah, that's a really great question. So we usually have workshops in the fall session. Mm -hmm. So um, this is our first workshop for, um, for the fall in September. Then we have another workshop in October. So that will be more geared towards uh, health and well-being. And then we have another session in November. Um, the topic hasn't been determined yet, but it will be more towards developing your career and uh, your professional life. 
uh, do you want to appeal to the young people how how they can get involved with your organization sure. and participate and how do you spread the word across to come and join your workshops well yeah that's a great question so um, we are a young organization the Canadian Tamil Alumni Association so um, if you want to be involved please email us at info at tamilalumni.ca and we also have a Facebook page uh, CTA so you can uh, join our Facebook group and like our Facebook page and then we can also add you as our part of our email uh, distribution list and um, the thing is these workshops are free sessions so we're providing a service to our community so that they can build on their business skills and move up in the career ladder uh, within their industry profession and also um, it's a great way to network with people because there are people within diverse industry areas whether it's human resources IT consulting um, medical industry any type of profession and it's a great way to network and meet other professionals is there an age limit? Uh, there's a certain age only can join the group, or is it uh, only for youth? Um, so we, our target audience is mainly um, young um, individuals that have graduated from university and started in their. Uh, professional um, industry area and then we also go up to like early 30s mid 30s but with our organization we don't limit ourselves so we want to make sure that whoever's interested in attending our workshops or attending our events can attend because um, we want to provide ample opportunity for everybody thank you very much oh thank you very much for your time some people are expressive you can see it on their face some people you can tell in the change of their tone tonality Right? Sometimes somebody that normally projects their voice and all of a sudden starts speaking softly. Something that normally speaks fine but is all of a sudden speaking fast. I mean, there are so many clues if only we paid attention. And sometimes people that are really expressive will just say, oh, I'm really frustrated by this. I'm so disappointed, I can't believe blah, blah, blah. Right? They're saying it to you all the time and you're, it's a, totally over your head because you're paying attention to other things. But there's one deeper level, and then we get to you, Michael. Michael, there's one deeper level. And that deeper level, and this is like just, you know, it comes with practice. It's like that chocolatey goodness that settles at the bottom. It's the values, the needs, the beliefs that people have, which is why they're feeling how they're feeling. Once you can understand that level, once you can listen for that depth, oh my gosh, your ability to influence will skyrocket. Because then you'll just get that person, oh, what you're really worried about is this. So if you can address that, then of course they're going to be on your side with that particular project. But you were so busy talking about at this level, you didn't really understand that this is what they cared about. And you haven't been addressing it because you're talking up here, right? And that's why it's so important to start to listen more I'll give you an example and I'm going to get to Michael's question or comment. Um, when I was, I was asked, when I was working for the consulting firm, I was asked to lead this national uh, cross-practice, cross-functional team I'm working with, they're using paying the bill. And so when I talked to them and I introduced myself, of course I introduced myself the same way when I was, you know, when I was starting out, and oh my goodness, did I get the worst like looks Ever like oh you're an Ivy grad oh you went to you are, you went to business school well then you must really be you know stuck up and arrogant and not really have anything valuable to say HR people hate business grads because you know I guess they've had so much experience with you know MBA students who graduate and think that they you know know everything and and don't think that it, a lot of HR people especially senior HR people these days it's different for you know new HR people coming up but. Senior HR people these days, a lot of them started from the bottom and moved their way up, right? So it's not because they have an MBA or they have some sort of degree that all of a sudden they got shot up to the VP of HR role. And so that did not give me credibility, but it actually took away credibility. So I actually started with a negative bank balance as soon as they heard anything about me being a business grad. I picked up on that pretty quick. Stopped talking about it completely. And then I would only talk about things that I, I knew would give me credibility with them, right? Stories, for example, of how I've helped other people in HR-related issues, right? Again, track record. So what I want you to do, let me just see here. So there, you know, there are lots of different factors, but maybe we can get Sharmila or somebody to help me hand these out so we can do this a little faster. There are two sheets. So there's a sheet with text on it, and then there's a table sheet. What I want you to do is, again, the sheet has plenty of, 
that she has plenty of uh, room for multiple stakeholders, but if I can just get you to focus on three for now, just in the interest of time. What I want you to do is look at each of those factors that give you credibility. So for example, track record I just told you.